schools of Inchicore here and all our very special guests. And we're delighted that this very important day has come. Um, and to welcome you all here, um, can I welcome on your behalf uh, Joe Duffy, who has held a candle for the children of uh, the 90 who died in the 19, during the 1916 Rising. We're delighted to have him here, and he's uh, driven this event, and uh, we're delighted. Here he is, Joe Duffy. Good morning, everybody. Our Mayor, uh, Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen, school children, great to see you here on this uh, day, 102 years after uh, Eugene died. He played here and he lays here. He lived just outside the gate on the, 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 uh, Vincent Street. So like yourselves, I used to love graveyards when I was a kid, chasing hide and seek. You can guarantee that Eugene and his pals, just like you, would be in here having fun and laughing and hopefully he laughed and played right up until uh, his untimely death uh, on uh, April the 28th, uh, 1916. I also want to remember uh, this time of year and hope they will be remembered in the official state ceremonies which are coming up in the next few weeks for the anniversary of the Rising, the 40 children, the 45 adults, women, civilians who were killed in the Troubles, the 200 male civilians who were killed during the Rising, the combatants on both sides who were killed, bringing a total in that week of just under 500 people uh, who died, and they are remembered. I just want to remember the children and take a minute because uh, hopefully their names will be read elsewhere. These are the 40 children, including Eugene, age 16 and under, who died in the Easter Rising 102 years ago. Bridget Allen, Christopher Andrews, Mary Ann Brunswick, Christina Caffrey, who was two, Christopher Catcart, Charles Darcy, Moses Doyle, Patrick Featherson, Sean Francis Foster, James Fox, William Fox, Neville Friday, James Gibney, John Sean Healy, Christopher Hickey, Patrick Ivers, Charles Cabinet, James Kelly, Mary Kelly, Patrick Kelly, John Kirwin, Eugene Lynch, Bridget McCain, John Henry McNamara, William Mullen, Joseph Murray, William O'Neill, Mayle O'Toole, we don't know his first name, Mary Redmond, Patrick Ryan, George Percy Sainsbury, Walter Scott, Bridget Stewart, William Lionel Swenny, Margaret Madge Veal, Philip Walsh, Eleanor Warbrook, Christopher Whelan, a child unidentified and an infant unidentified. They are the 40 children who died uh, in 1916. And this occasion this morning is made possible by the wonderful work of uh, Glasnevin Trust in uh, supplying basically the headstone. Uh, Connor Dodd, the late great Shane McAmosh, whose anniversary was this week. It was Shane who, when, when I was working on this project, and he rang me one day really excited because we've gone through the registry in Glasnevin and the great vault underneath the museum in Glasnevin and we were going through a page after page looking for children, see what they died from and then he said to me one day, he rang it with great excitement and enthusiasm that was the wonderful Shane McAmosh he said, Joe, what about Golden Bridge? Why don't we go through Golden Bridge? I didn't even know Golden Bridge He said, why don't we go through? So we belted up and we went through the register and there he found it there it was in front of us all along, Eugene Lynch, eight years, nine months, buried on a Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, two days after he was killed at the gate of Richmond Barracks there. We don't know what the circumstances of his death. The local story is that a gun was discharged by a British soldier who invariably, inevitably in 1916 in that barracks would have been an Irish person. Um, they were playing ball, something happened, the gun was discharged, Eugene was carried to his granny's pub and laid out on the table, on one of the tables, and that's, that's where he died. We reckon at his funeral on that day, April 28, 1916, at 11 o'clock on the Sunday morning, as they carried that box through that gate, he was in a box, a four foot box, through that gate, we reckon there was three people at his funeral that Sunday morning. I thank you for coming in your numbers today for this ceremony for Eugene Lynch. Good morning. Ben Walsh, A.B. O'Neill, Saffron, Devereux, um, McCarthy and Leon Griffin. Just listen to the words. For far too long in Inchy Car, I did not know your name. The Rising's history was people like 
those men of brighter fame. I never saw your fair haired head or spoke to you face to face, but I feel that we're connected by our shared roots in this place. I've traveled back to meet you and have wished that we were friends and hope that we being with you here in some way makes amends. No longer a forgotten child, your story has come to be a prayer for the children of this place that's you, Eugene, and me. These streets now form my playground, the canal and lock gates too. Each twist of the Kamak I love, they all want to come to you. You played your games in the exact same spots where now I am with the road. The lanes in which your fun was had is now my practice game. And the football that you kicked that day is kicked around here still, with the wit and roguish humour that this special place is still. For in Jakar it is our world, a cradle strong and free, the stage for many a happy day for you, you do. And when terror came to our small place, and when the bullets pierced the air, and when disputes left vulnerable the children in their care, there came for you, my poor young friend, a blood fell on the ground, and grief sought down St. Vincent Street as the awful news went round. They brought you to your land's pub for all the women and the men, just could not save you from a box that made her four for ten. You lost you down to a cruel end that was not of your design, and I cannot save you from a fate that was yours, Eugene, not mine. A centuries past, and now, my friend, the time at last has come to bring your story before the world and remember our long lost son. As today we unveil your headstone and our heads become to bow to offer respect and dignity, which your death did not allow. And although I did not etch the words and I did not carve the stone, I hope I've shown in some small way that you will never be alone. For your story has lit a mighty hope in the hearts of boys and girls, in every child who's fallen fell in a violent adult world. For every life in our world right now who hopes that war will cease to be, and that peace will be an endless gift for you, Eugene, and me. Mina Magwe Vardvera, Chapte Katra Ninch Joe, of this all. Friends, it's a great honour to be just here to offer a short prayer. The Capuchins in Church Street were associated with the uh, the pastoral outreach to the um, the people of that area and city centre Dublin uh, in the morning of Easter 1916. And the first encounter they had was of young Sean Francis Foster, the first child. Uh, to, to be sadly killed as a result of the, the conflict. Now, we're standing here uh, this morning. It's a dull morning, but it's bright in so many other ways. We're, we can hear sounds of the Lewis, and we can hear sounds of a car alarm out there, and we can hear sounds of uh, traffic. And this morning, we are able to hear a beautiful sound of a blackbird as well. And when things quiet and down here, I'm sure the others who are interred here uh, hear those lovely sounds as well. And they're the sounds that uh, Eugene and his pals would have been more familiar with in their time. And I know that perhaps today we hear his sound, his lovely voice all over again, because we've discovered his voice all over again. And it's wonderful to see the young people who are here. And some of you are around the same age as Eugene was. And in your generation today, you're familiar with Snapchat and Wi-Fi and Facebook. It's something that he would never have remembered or never have known. And this morning we uh, reach out to him uh, from our time and we thank God and we pray again for uh, the way in which he has reached out to us across the years. So I just want to say a short prayer now uh, as we offer uh, in our memories um, a reflection. This beautiful reflection, your own reflections there and the other reflections that will come. We offer up a tribute to Eugene and to the other children. So we ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, as we approach the great feast of Easter, the great feast of the Lord's resurrection, to come down upon us now and especially to bless this little grave of Eugene and send your holy angel to watch over it. As we remember here the mortal remains of this young lad, may he now be numbered among the saints in heaven and may he reach out to us in prayer 
and in laughter and in joy. And may all who we love in the kingdom reach out to us and protect us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. And I'm so grateful to be here and to be a part of this wonderful family. And it's lovely to see so many people here. I want to thank you. I'd like to thank Joe Duffy for all his hard work. Our family are so appreciative. I'd like to thank Glass Nevin for honouring our beautiful family member and for all of the children that died, for the suffering that their parents must have felt that day. And when I look at the photograph and I look at these women, I think, oh my God, we're one of these women. I'm just so moved and so grateful to be here. And thank you to, from the family. I can't say much more, only that we're very grateful. And thank you so much. Okay. Golden Bridge was first opened. It was the first cemetery where people of all religions and none could be buried in this city. So it has a huge part in this country, in fact. So it has a huge part to play in our history. I think it's fair to say that the revitalization of this area is up and running. Four years ago, many people would have shunned this area. Now, now it is a center for tourism and education. Congratulations to you all. Take me out. 
well done. Congratulations to all involved for putting together this wonderful ceremony to remember you as him. Particularly Joe and the class that we trust. But it's uh, extremely encouraging to witness, hear and see all the young talent coming up. These great children with their lovely poetry. They are the torch bearers that will carry these stories into the future. And some of us are gone. This is my song, The Children of Sixteen. In Dublin town on Easter morn, a hundred years ago, the rebels led a rising from the city's GPO. Brave heroes and their enemies fell, civilians in between, and among the dead and fallen were the children of sixteen. Those children of the tenement slums who did With their handcarts over cobbled stone, rattled, skid and tore, barefooted as they scavenged through the crossfire and the gold. Oh, was on of the capital, the bomb and shelling made and snipers bullets pierced and whipped the sulphur April haze there was fighting from the Union to the mill above the green and it made a great excitement for the children of sixteen. Six days had been the rebels paid brave and bloody toad. But through their blood and martyrdom, Republic soon was born. I loved its streets and buildings now, their names can ever be seen, but still missing from the page are the children of sixteen? Not Pierce, not Clark, McDonough, no. proud and free, and our sisters and our brothers then, the children of
victims of conflict throughout the world. I want to sincerely thank everyone involved in bringing us to this day, particularly Joe Duffy and Glasnet and Trust, and Jordan McCullough and his team for the work they have done in restoring this beautiful graveyard and allowing it to be reopened to the public as this historic memorial in the parish of St Michael's. Aideen Cleary of the Richmond Barracks for a wonderful work. It wouldn't have happened without so many people like Aideen, like George McCullough, uh, like Liz, where's Liz Fitzpatrick, like Martin Halligan, like John Green, all the people from Glasnevin Trust, all the various schools, the three schools have been absolutely brilliant, going right back to uh, to 2016 and you'll see when we did a service here in 2016 for Eugene the children came along they made a slate and they scratched etched his name Eugene's name on the slate and we've incorporated that slate into this uh, new headstone so uh, thank you all for coming and to say to the children uh, come back to this graveyard and your sounds your voices and your play will echo just as uh, Eugene did so our Piper Christie will uh, lead the family and in the family we have a Eugene Lynch Eugene Lynch would you stand up please that's Eugene Lynch Lynch a nephew of Eugene Lynch beside you two fine handsome men beside him is another fine handsome man Nicholas Lynch the Nicholas is Irene McInerney, so the niece of Eugene Lynch. So uh, three, the two nephews of the niece, along with their families, along with the Lord Mayor, along with um, Catherine, the born minister, uh, we will follow the piper around past those other historic graves of two prime ministers. I think it's the only two Taoiseach, I think it's the only graveyard in the world that actually has two uh, Taoiseach buried uh, in, in, in the one uh, area. So uh, Christy will lead us round. The family will unveil the headstone. They will have a few minutes of uh, their own private time. And then the service will conclude uh, with the national anthem. Um, for the pupils and students, um, the bad news is you're going back to school. <laughs> but I think the good news is you're getting a half day. I think so. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Lord Mayor can decree that they get a half day, that they get a half day. I think you are getting a half day. For the rest of you here, uh, and like every service after this, uh, you're invited by the family back over to Richmond Barracks, courtesy of Aideen and her team, for a cup of tea and a sandwich, and I hope you can come over there. But Christy now will lead the family around to the grave.